Hello everyone and welcome to another Everton show. The Ronald Koeman bandwagon is rolling along very nicely, isn't it? Two wins in four days in two competitions and another Goodison fixture to look forward to this weekend. Alongside me this week to pick the bones out of a fine start to the season is Ian Snowden. Snod, it was a, a good week. It's been a great week. Uh, good victory down at West Brom after going a goal behind and then a comfortable victory against Yeovil in, uh, in the Cup. So... Uh, a lot of smiling, happy people at Goodison and at Finch Farm. Including the manager. Including the manager. <laughs> <laughs> and he is a hard man to please. This is what else we've got in store for you on this week's programme. It's every Evertonian's dream to lead out, the, lead out the club and captain the side. And it's a dream come true for me today. And I'm glad that we, went, we won as well. Myself, you know, I'm still getting to know the players like Ross, Romelu and, you know, Kevin and there's Gerard as well. You know, so it's going to be great playing with all of these talented players. When I was younger, six, seven, I started up front. So I slowly, just, slowly just worked my way back. I used to be up front, right mid, centre mid, right back, left back, centre back. I played them all, to be fair. I manage a lot of good players. But he's one of the players who is really intelligent and, and make decisions and solutions if there's any problem on the pitch. Well, before we look at the Premier League victory at West Brom last weekend, we'll concentrate first on Tuesday night's win in the EFL Cup second round. As we've already alluded to, we bagged four excellent goals at Goodison against Yeovil Town, one of which was a 30-yard free kick from Ross Barkley. And that topped a special night for the young man who wore the captain's armband for the very first time. It's every Evertonian's dream to lead out, the, lead out the club and captain the side, and it's a dream come true for me today, and I'm glad that we, went, we won as well. When did you find out you were going to be having that honour, and what did the manager say to you about it? Um, just before the game, the manager said, um, I'm captain today, and he said, you know how much it means to be captain of Everton today, so go out there and show what you can do, which, which we did do as a team today. And how important was it, or how good was it, to cap it with that goal as well? Yeah, I was over the moon to get the goal, but the most important thing was for us to go through to the next round, which we did do. Bit of a cheeky finish from the free kick, did you see a bit of a gap there? Um, yeah, I did. Um, we only had one man in the wall, so I thought, why not? I'm going to say, so it came off and um, I was over the moon for it to go on the back of the net. And it gave you the opportunity to reveal that tribute as well, just tell us a little bit about that. Um, yeah, um, it's just a little um, message for um, Sid Benson and his family as well, because um, who knows, maybe I might not be where I am today without him. Um, he spotted me when I was a kid and brought me to Everton. And ever since then, he spoke to me weekly since I was a kid. And I sad to hear that he passed away throughout, through the week. And it was just a little message for, for Sid. I was, I was sad to see him go. And um, I know he's watching down on all those blues. He's the biggest Everton fan you can see. Just before we speak about Ross and being captain of Everton, Lovely tribute to Sid Benson, mm. as was the applause before the game starts. I thought that was wonderful. Yeah, very deserving, Daz, because mm. uh, I spoke to Sid many occasions and he was a great team, either at uh, Belfield or at Finch Farm. Uh, it'll be a sad loss. He's brought many a good player to Everton Football Club. And he'd have loved to have seen Ross Barkley lead the team out because he brought Ross to the football club in the first place. Yeah, as we've just seen in, in Ross's interview, uh, to wear the shirt as well. He got a goal so he could parade that shirt as well in front of the Gladys Street end. So, yeah, fitting tribute, uh, tribute from Ross. Interesting decision by the manager, wasn't it, to make Ross the captain? Very. I was surprised. I really was. I thought uh, Williams might have got the armband or there's one or two others out there. But uh, what a feeling. It must be Evertonian, uh, captain of, of Everton Football Club first time and great honour for Ross. He seemed to enjoy it, didn't he? He did do. He played well. Played well and scored a great goal. Well, that 4-0 win against Yeovil Town was played out in front of a decent crowd of 25,000 at Goodison. The team from League Two gave a good account of themselves before Premier League quality swung the tie Everton's way. And the outcome left Ronald Koeman a happy man. Finally, we made uh, the difference what uh, maybe everybody expect tonight. But I, I think, uh, OK, it's always uh, some things, some aspects uh, tonight that we can improve. But finally, I think we took it seriously. Uh, we had a good, serious defending, strong defending. They did not create any chance. And we had some, some very good chances to score more goals. But finally, I think it's, uh, it's a result what everybody expects. What was the thinking behind giving Ross Barkley the, the captain's armband for the first time? 
Nou, always uh, Jay, uh, Jakelka, Phil was not on the pitch, Baines was not on the pitch. And if you look around in the team, uh, maybe uh, Ross is the player who is the longest time in the club. And, uh, and also for him, it's a next step that he knows uh, he's not anymore the talent. He needs uh, to show me more responsibility to the, to for, the, for the rest of the team. I think it's a good experience for young players. He tried to lead by example, didn't he? Didn't have put a, a lot of work in. Yeah, but okay, even, even sometimes he can play faster. And he can be more aggressive, but uh, okay, we we work on that, and uh, and he's open. He he likes to improve, and uh, finally we will get him on the on on the right place. Lovely tribute to Sid Benson as well when he scored the goal. Yeah, that's always nice because that's uh, that he realised uh, uh, a big Evertonian, and uh, and what he showed uh, is perfect. Were you pleased overall with the performance? Yeah, I, I'm I'm very critical and uh, sometimes maybe too critical and uh, but it's all about if you start the game and 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 you don't play a uh, high tempo it's not so difficult for them to have the good organization defensively and you saw by the first goal if we really play high tempo good movements then 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 you can create a lot and uh, okay but finally is the score what uh, what i like and aruna kone come on Late on in the game, and certainly made the most of his opportunity, didn't he? Yeah, but it's always, always good and always nice to have a bench uh, with quality players. And uh, if one is not uh, really uh, good on on this evening, then then you have uh, good replacements, you have good substitutes to break it down, or even to score more goals. What we did uh, in the last 20 minutes. Just finally, the reaction of the supporters before the game, so the strength of the lineup and the strength of the bench was was fantastic. It just shows that they know that you're going to take this competition really yeah. seriously. <laughs> yeah, but then, 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 of course, I think everybody uh, tried to take it seriously. But maybe if you see some lineups, it's not always the best team then then you can put on the pitch and and, and still be in, the, in 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 the beginning of the season and nobody can be tired and uh, and some players they need really that 90 minutes but they got tonight like uh, Romelu like like Ashley like Yannick and and that's good and uh, it was a strong team and uh, but that's all the, about the competition what we have so the 4-0 outcome was comfortable in the end but it took quite a while to actually put the game to bed didn't it yeah it did i i thought you have uh, were a credit to themselves, I really did. I thought the fans as well that travelled up over 900 from Yeovil on a, on a, on a, for a night game at Goodison Park were fantastic. Uh, but once we once we got the first goal, I really thought we were comfortable. We were going to go through. But I thought all four goals were really good goals. And uh, Aruna came on and got his two goals as well, which is, which is great news for him. So overall, comfortable performance. weren't brilliant, but we did the job. Looked very very comfortable. Joel Robles and six experienced internationals on the bench for a League Cup tie. You and I both said in commentary, we've never seen that before. No, that's brilliant. And it just shows that uh, the boss wants to go out and win every game that he plays. He wants strength uh, in depth as well. And uh, hopefully we'll, that will continue in both the FA Cup and this Cup competition. This League Cup, the EFL Cup, mm. I don't like that name. No. It's one we can win, isn't it? It certainly is. And uh, we'll be striving for that. Have to think that way. Well, four days before that League Cup tie, Everton chalked up a first Premier League win of the campaign, coming from behind to beat West Bromwich Albion by two goals to one. Amongst the many plus points to emerge from a memorable afternoon at the Hawthorns was a promising debut for Yannick Balassi. The new boy impressed the travelling Toffees after coming on as a second half sub, but he later insisted that the main remit of his day was to help the team get three points. Obviously, the main thing today was three points, and you know, I'm delighted to make my debut, you know. It hasn't felt real until I but I actually came on the pitch, you know, and realised I'm actually never in player. What a great reception from the travelling supporters. Our away support is fantastic, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, I heard a lot of things about them and today, you know, um, they was out of the world. So, you know, credit to them and I wish them a safe journey back home. This is a difficult place to come to, isn't it, West Brom? Because Tony Pulis always has his teams organised. Yeah, all the time I've been here in the past couple of years and it's always been a tough game, you know, but... You know, Everton today, the team that plays with the ball, you know, we dominated and, you know, we got the two goals that we needed and we could have got a couple more, but, you know, that's football. But overall, I'm just happy with the win today. I was going to say, it could easily have been 3-1 or 4-1, couldn't it? Yeah, you know, um, but myself, you know, I'm still getting to know the players like Ross, Romelu and, you know, Kevin and there's Gerard as well. 
you know, so it's going to be great playing with all of these talented players. You're an experienced player, you've played in the Premier League a while now, but it's still difficult, isn't it, when you come to a new club? You've got to impress, I suppose, the staff, the fans and your teammates as well. Yeah, you know, you've always got to impress, you know, and, you know, the price tag don't help you, well, but, you know, I'm, I'm confident, you know, that I can come down and try to do what I was doing at Palace and show my qualities. Mason Holgate played well, didn't he, for a young boy? Yeah, you know, um, played against him in training, you know, and you know, gave him some tips about wingers. You know, you, you don't want to be going to floor unless you're certain. And he's done well against um, their two wingers that he had to occupy today. Tell us about the gaffer's tactics at West Brom. Very interesting. Uh, I know he, he put James in uh, the right wing back position, but it, what, it wasn't working. Not, and that's no disrespect to James, but uh, the gaffer saw we got problems, wanted to be more offensive, and certainly went out and changed it. Brave, wasn't it? Very brave. Very brave decision. But it worked. And that's it for part one. Don't go too far away, though, because after this short break, we'll bring you the latest victory for our under-23s, and we'll hear from our chief executive officer as well. Welcome back. Now, regular viewers to the Everton show will have enjoyed watching the under-23s in action this season. David Unsworth and his boys have already won three trophies and they've made a 100% winning start to their new Premier League 2 season. Well, that continued at Southport on Monday night when the lads beat Derby County 2-0. Here are the goals and the post-match reaction from Unsley and from the goal hero, Harry Charsley. Everton under-23s maintained their 100% start to the season with a 2-0 victory over Derby County on Tuesday evening. David Unsworth's side, boosted by the return of John Joe Kenny and Callum Connolly in defence, got off to a flyer as Harry Charsley found the bottom corner inside two minutes following a sweeping counter-attack down the right-hand side. The result was sealed on the half-hour when Charsley stole possession on the halfway line, played a neat one-two with Kieran Dow and squeezed a shot home off the inside of the post. Speaking after a third win in seven days, boss Unsworth declared himself pleased with the way his side executed their game plan. We had a look at Derby and we felt that that was the best way to, to go into the game tonight if we were you know, pre pressing them from the front. But you know, all together as a team, we felt, we felt that was the way to go tonight. You know, we, we change our, not style, but our game plan depending on the opposition. So certainly something we've worked on. You pleased with the flexibility of the lads then to execute a game plan like that? I think it's, I think it's imperative that they, that they are flexible, that they, are, they can deliver a game plan, that they can um, play in different formations and positions. That are, you know, uh, any time you want to make that switch, they can do it. And uh, all, that, all the credit goes to them because the great listeners of this group, the, the players, the great listeners and they want to learn and they want to get better and they want to get better quickly. How do you turn a victory tonight and two goals for yourself? You must be delighted with that. Yeah, really good uh, team performance tonight and uh, delighted to score two goals and help the team win. You scored a couple of goals in pre-season and as I say, two goals there for you tonight. Is that something you've, you've um, been working on in the off-season? Uh, yeah, but I think I've, I always try and score goals and I think I want to get it part of my game and uh, hopefully I can keep doing it. Two goals there for Harry Charsley, two more goals. Now, Harry doesn't get as many headlines as some of his other colleagues, but uh, you like him, don't you? I do like him. Uh, I think he's improving all the time. Every time I, w I was there at the game, a uh, gun contingent of us there, the big Duncan were there, Erwin Koeman were there, me and Graham Stewart, John Doolan, big Joe Royal. So we're all watching and all talking amongst ourselves as the game's progression as well. And we're all saying, what a talented young player he's, he's beginning to be. Scoring goals as well, which is really important for the team. So, yeah, Unzi's doing ever so well with the 23s. They're playing with loads of confidence. Uh, they're looking forward to the games and uh, the winning games. I and mean, it makes it even better. And something Unzi said there in the interview, I've heard him say it before, this group are good listeners. Mm. They need to be, I suppose. You know what, that's very, very important as a footballer. I know you can get some bad advice, but... I believe in, in Unzi, he, he gives them great advice. John Ebrill's with him now as well. And I think that's great. Unzi says the boys listen. And uh, it, takes, it takes a lot at 17, 18, 19 to listen and grasp everything. But these boys seem to be doing it. Ryan Ledson's gone to Oxford United on a permanent deal. We wish him well. Well, we do wish him well. He's a nice kid, Ryan. Mm. Uh, I've known him. He had a, we thought he had a bright future when he was younger at Everton. But he'll, he'll bounce back. He'll go down there and he'll do well and hopefully get back to the Premier League. He'll certainly make a career out of professional football, that's for sure. Well, John Joe Kenny played in that win against Derby County, his first game of the season after recovering from injury. He was delighted not only with the manner of the win, but also on a personal level to be back out on the football pitch. 
you know, I've been out for about a month now, so to have to get back, get a 90 minutes in me belt and, you know, get a win. How's the knee feeling after such a long time out? Yeah, sound. Um, you know, I've uh, been working with the physios and, you know, I feel good now and I'm back, hopefully back into it now, yeah. Good to get back out on the pitch amongst the lads. Yeah, yeah, you know, I've missed it, you know, I've missed a bit of pre-season, so it's not the best time to be uh, to be missing football, but, you know, I'm back now and I want to kick on. Play alongside Cal Connolly there at centre-half tonight, how, how, how good was that for you? Yeah, um, you know, we've, we've been injured together, so, you know, being a bit through it together, getting back fit and to play alongside them today, I thought it was brilliant as well, so, you know, we kept clean sheet and thought it was a good game altogether. What are your aims now looking at the rest of the season? Obviously, the first team manager coming in, are you looking to impress there as quickly as you can? Of course, you know. That's what I want to do. I want to be at Everton football and play for Everton's first team with Jimmy Hout. And, you know, I'm here to, that's what I get, I'm here for. I want to play in front of him. But if that doesn't happen, then you know, I'd happily go on loan. Or, but, you know, my first choice, so, you know, I want to impress the manager and stay around as long as I can. I can't look at John Joe Kenny's nods either doing his post-match interviews, speaking to him in the corridor at Finch <laughs> Farm or playing for Everton without thinking of Tony Hibbert. <laughs> he does. He just reminds <laughs> you, doesn't he, the way he speaks, the mannerisms about him. But uh, he's, he's certainly a talented player. Mm -hmm. I know it was his first game back, but he looked comfortable. And I don't know where John Joe's best position is because he's comfortable in any right back. People are saying he's not big enough for a centre back, but he's got a leap. He can, mm -hmm. when it needs to be headed, he heads it. But he looks so comfortable on the ball, and that's why he's an England international at that age group as well. Very accomplished player. And he likes to tackle. He does like tackling, <laughs> and that's why I like him, because he <laughs> likes to tackle. <laughs> There's never a good time for a young player to get injured, no. but John Joe had just made a good impression on the, the first team supporters, if you like, playing in the last game of last season. He must have been devastated. Yeah, and he had a couple of good spells on loan as well at mm. uh, Wigan and Oxford, got promotion with Oxford. So uh, he's experienced that side of it as well, going out on loan, which is good, great for any young kid, but he wants to play for Everton Football Club, you can tell that, and I'm sure he was delighted when he made his debut uh, last season. And uh, yeah, hopefully one for the future, and he'll get many games for Everton Football Club. He was on loan at Oxford. We had John Lundstrom, who's now at Oxford, mm. Ryan Ledson as well. It's nice to have that relationship, isn't it? That trust. Yeah, it is, and uh, I'm sure there'll be many more clubs and that Joe Rawls working with, managers, coaches, etc., that these young players will go and perform for. They're much coveted players, aren't they, our young boys? Mm -hmm. And while we're on the subject of young footballers and academy graduates, we're going to hear now from Robert Elston. Robert knows full well that a thriving academy is fundamental to any future progress for our football club. And I can tell you that nobody was more delighted than our CEO to see homegrown blue Ross Barkley, Captain Everton, against Yeovil on Tuesday night. You saw the, uh, the extra special relationship that Ross has with our fans. You know, we hear Ross's song, we hear it on the terraces, we hear it in the service stations, we hear it in the pubs and uh, it, it just demonstrates that extra level of empathy that we have to homegrown players. And uh, of course, you know, it's not just about uh, that relationship with the fans, it also makes great sense economically to develop our own footballers, to take control over what they look like, how they play, how they behave. Uh, and essentially also you know, av avoid what could be you know, a significant transfer fee. So there's lots of great reasons. The connection with the fans, the ability to shape and create a player in a mould and a model that you know, suits the way we want to play and suits our manager. So there are lots and lots of good reasons for supporting the academy. And it was a bit of an emotional night yeah. as well in yeah. terms of obviously Sid Benson yeah. and all that had happened yeah. In, yeah. The, in the preceding yeah, days. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The tributes to Sid have been uh, fantastic and... Um, and I know they're greatly appreciated, but again, it endorses, underlines um, what the academy means to the lads who are here and what the academy means above all else to our fans. And, uh, and Sid was um, a massive figure in, 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 in what this academy has achieved over, over recent years and, uh, and, and will be sadly missed. And you can see what Ross felt about him and, and that's uh, a sentiment shared by uh, so many Evertonians, particularly here down at the academy. It does, as you said, shows what the academy means to Everton Football Club. We took a really radical step uh, earlier this year as well in the appointment of Dr Peter Vint as the academy director. Mm -hmm. Tell me a little bit about that in terms of the, the, the call that you made initially, yeah. the process of bringing Peter yeah. here and just the vision yeah. of appointing someone like Peter with his background into yeah. that role. Yeah, well, I mean, the vision was, uh, as, as it is across the entire club, to be the absolute best we can be and to be in amongst the best in the world and so the vision to create the best football academy in the world is is something that we um, absolutely aspire to. To achieve that we have to be 
brave and bold and ambitious and push back boundaries really in terms of uh, the resources and the skills that we want to embrace and yes we absolutely had a very good academy that was category one status that had good coaches that had good core disciplines but what we wanted to do was add some uh, more experience, more value into that process by looking at somebody who could bring fresh things, fresh ideas, look to push boundaries, look to think, challenge conventional thinking, look to do things in a different way. And Peter then emerged, in, in our opinion, as, as the best in class in that group. Now, um, you know, in some ways, clearly, it is a brave decision to take somebody um, who's not a football person and give him responsibility for developing Everton stars of the future. He absolutely believes in Nil Satis Nisi Optimum and all his career at, uh, at the US Olympic Committee and, and previous career was around that meticulous preparation, that detail, you know, and, and again, it's a bit of a cliche now, those marginal gains that we've seen so effectively come to bear in other sports. He has got some fantastic support. You know, we've got a very strong established scouting team. We've got a great established coaching team and we'll look to enhance that. We really want to take what is a very, very good academy but make it you know, the absolute best it possibly can be and amongst the best in the world. So now Peter Vince has got a terrific sporting CV. He's been involved with Team USA at the Olympics, but as, he, as Robert alluded to in the interview there, he's got terrific support with the coaches down at uh, Finch Farm, who I've got the football knowledge. Yeah, when he first arrived, uh, me, Graham and, and Diamond, uh, we had lunch with him and uh, very interesting ideas, what he had, and he was the first to tell us he says, it's not my strong point, football. He said, but I'll have people down there, like Sir Kevin Sheedy, John Doolan, Franny Jeffers, uh, Phil Jevons, all Evertonians as well. So he'll have, he'll be working with them. He'll, have, he'll tap into their knowledge on football without a doubt. So, yeah, interesting appointment. And as well, they, they are the DNA of the football club, aren't mm. they? The, the lads you mentioned there have all played for Everton. Yeah, uh, and, and that's why I think it's great for the football club that players, they don't have to have played for Everton, obviously, but it certainly helps when uh, they know all about the club, they feel for the club, the coaches, in a big, big way, and they can put that over to the, the young players that are, are coming through and in the academy. It's the ideal scenario, isn't it? You've been involved in football all your life, to bring a boy in, eight, nine, ten years of age, develop him, let him progress through the ranks, and see him walking out on the pitch at Goodison Park on a Saturday afternoon in front of 40,000 people. Yeah, that, that's the dream. That's why academies are. That's why we've got one of the best academies in football as well. We give our young boys a chance. And the parents see that. They think, well, if they've got an opportunity to go another academy, at least Everton will give them the chance to make the first team. They're not scared to put them in. And that's what we're all about. You like watching the games down at Finch Farm, don't you? Do. All the age groups. I do, I do. I think there's some great, talented young, young footballers down there. Very talented players and very talented coaches as well. And that's it for part two after another short break. For a few adverts, we'll be back with our popular big interview segment of the programme. And this week we feature a young player with a big future, Mason Holgate. Welcome back to part three of this week's Everton show. And that means it's time for our big interview slot. And this week we sat down with a young man who is rather busy just now making a big name for himself on the big stage. Beyond the boundaries of Finch Farm and Goodison Park, not many people were aware of Mason Holgate before the start of the season. But I'll tell you what, they are now. As for the boy himself, he's as grounded as they come. Typical Yorkshireman, Snods will probably say. This is Mason Holgate telling us all about his journey to Merseyside. Um, just a Sunday league club in, in Doncaster uh, called Scorefork Scorpions. I would join there when I was like six. So I just played, played there for a year or two. And how did Barnsley find you? Um, from there, yeah. So I was at Barnsley from like seven. So I was there for a year and then uh, Barnsley had like a little centre of excellence kind of thing that you just trained in. I trained there at night and then one day we went on trial to, to Barnsley. I know you're a Doncaster man, so was it a bit odd being at Barnsley? Yeah, um, Barnsley's got a, from around there. I'd probably say Barnsley's one of the better academies around there. So once I got the sound off Barnsley going, it just seemed better for me to go there than I think at the time. I don't think Doncaster had enough proper help, so I chose Barnsley to go to. Were you always a defender? No, uh, well I start when I was younger, six, seven, I started up front, slowly, slowly, just, slowly just worked my way back, <laughs> up front, right mid, centre mid, right back, left back, centre back, I played them all to be fair, so 
just been working my way back slowly. I've only got keeper left now. <laughs> <laughs> so the future for you then, yeah, is it? Yeah. <laughs> uh, is, are you happy with that? Are you settled as a defender? Or yeah, do you yeah, but, dream of being a striker? Obviously, it's nice to score goals, isn't it? <laughs> but um, I'll play anywhere. I'm not really bothered. Um, as long as I'm playing, I'm not too fussed where, where it is, wherever I've seen to be best at, I'll play there. Right? And how did you progress into the first team at Barnsley? When were you told that you were going to be first? Oh, it, it's a story in itself. I, um, I would never, I've never been, I'd never been on bench. I was just an under 18, and uh, there were lots of injuries and suspensions. And the, there was a, a guy was like questionable if he was fit or not. But they tried to push him through because they didn't have any other defenders. And then physio, uh, our good friends with physio, and I was driving in, excited to be on bench against Doncaster Rovers first game. Um, and then physios rang me and said, be ready, we're not sure if you'll get through. And then he ended up getting injured, didn't warm up, um, like saying he couldn't get on. So then they've just called me over, Danny Wilson called me over and then I ended up starting game. So that was my first first team experience, starting straight away. I mean, what, what a manager to, to work under as well, Danny Wilson's been around for ages. Oh, he's got a lot of experience, yeah. Um, there's not too many out there who's put, managed as many games as he has. It's a hell of a first season for you because you ended up winning Young Player of the Year. Yeah, um, it was, I only broke in around December time, so to get that through only playing half season, really good for me. The fans were good with me, obviously, because I came through the academy as well, but I enjoyed the season a lot and I thought I played quite well in it. Were there any particular games that you recall from that half season that stand out still? Well, they were, I learned a lot of things in each season. There's the, obviously my first goal, I scored it in the last game of the season, and then it wasn't all good, obviously. I got sent off against Doncaster Rovers. Doncaster Rovers have been a big part of me, haven't they? Um, but yeah, there were a lot of ups and downs, but I enjoyed it, yeah. I'm going to have to ask you about the goal and the sending off. What happened with both? Um, the goal from a corner, uh, last game of the season, against Rochdale, uh, just tapped it in. And then sending off, we're in 90th minute, I think, against Doncaster Rovers, 1-0. Just missed time to tackle. Straight got a red card. <laughs> August 2015, quite a big day for you, signing for mm. Everton. Why did you choose us? Um, just how many people like me who's come from low leagues, just the, how many people have done it. Just people like Stonesy, Brendan, they've all been like me, played 20 odd games in a lower league, came here, each had like a season out at 21s, learning, developing, and then trying to break in. So that's what I thought. It'd be better for me to try and do than go to a team where I wouldn't be sure if I'd play in. Playing 21 has got out. And just, I just thought everything were a better choice for me. Obviously, as you say, you, you had a season with the 21s. Was that quite tough, dropping back down to that level, given that you've been playing first team football? Um, at first, it was difficult because it's, it's a different style of football. But I learned a lot from it working with Unzi because my defence worked a lot, a lot on my defending. So I've tried to improve on that because obviously I like playing with both from the midfielders but Unzi said to me like we know you can do it on the ball it's you defending so we worked a lot on that so this last season helped me a lot to my positioning my defending and everything like that. It's certainly as, as coaches and a group of lads go it's very easy to settle in in that group. Yeah definitely everyone's always excited buzzing around in the 21 that it's really good to get involved in. And when were you told that you were going to be quite Involved in pre-season this time around? Um, not, I've never, I, there's not been a real point where I've been told that. I came in with first week I, when we was with the 21s. I think I'll, I don't know if I was planning on going away with them to, to, know, to Spain or not, but then I ended up going to Austria. And then I thought I was just going to be there for a week with Austria. And then I, as week on weeks gone on, I've just stayed with first team. How enjoyable has it been? Yeah, it's been great. That's what I've came to do, be in and around the first team. It's what I've, my aim is, so to do that, it's been good. Uh, don't know if you saw, but Ronald was, was talking about you quite, uh, praising you quite a lot after the uh, the game at Old Trafford. Um, has he spoken to you at all in this pre uh, Not Not really, no, but for him to come out and say that's obviously good on my part. I'm just glad I got a chance to play. and. For him to say that it don't matter about age, if you're good enough, you're good enough. So have a big incentive for me and everyone else around my age to know that if you're doing well, you will play. 
it's quite a theatre for you to play and against someone like Zlatan Ibrahimovic. Yeah. I mean, you must have had to pinch yourself. Yeah, um, it would be first five minutes are a bit taken back. Like I'd see like people like Rooney and Marshall run past me, and I'm like, what's happening here? But then once you get settled into it, it just feels like a normal game, and um, just try to get down to how I usually play my game. It didn't let it affect me. Uh, again, the the senior team are quite a welcoming bunch, aren't they? Yeah, they've all been great. I mean, a lot of experienced pros in there, so training with them and working with them and them helping me out is obviously going to make me a lot better as a player. Be fair to your county snods. They know how to breed defenders, don't they? <laughs> they do. He's a great lad. I've known his dad since I was 16-year-old myself, uh, Tony, who said to me after the Tottenham game, wow, I've never been as nervous for my lad in all my life. <laughs> uh, he said I could hardly watch it, and he said I was just praying that he'd do everything right, and he, d he has done. He's, he's done fantastically well, come in early age. Uh, he's only been at the club, what, mm. 10 months, Daz? Mm. Was it just over? And uh, yeah, he's certainly got a bright future. And he's, he's, a, he's a lovely kid. Um, I just, looking at his interview there, I, I remember Scorthorpe Scorpions myself. My <laughs> son's played against him. Uh, my really? son, Reese played against him at school. Uh, and he, But I went to a school game when Reese were playing against him. And I, and I said then, I, I was talking to Tony, his dad, watching the game, I think they were about 14 year old then, and I went, wow, he's a player. I mean, he, was playing, he was playing midfield then, but he just run the complete game, and, and I knew then that he'd got a future. It's interesting you say you saw him play midfield, because mm. he likes to get forward, doesn't he? Mm. He hasn't found the net yet for Everton in his opening few games, but the boy looks as if there's a goal in there somewhere. Yeah, there does, uh, and he, he was that good at, at that age, he was far better than any, any other local kids in any school team so he really dominated the game as a as a midfield player he could go past past people he got good pace so uh, yeah he, he, I know why he can play several positions mm -hmm. uh, and he'll end up playing will he be centre-back will he be a right-back could he be an old midfield player you don't know what this kid could be he hasn't looked out of place has he? no. he's played against some big teams some big players he has, and I think he relishes it as well. Mm. Uh, I don't think he's he's afraid. He just mentioned in his interview when Rooney went past him, Martial, he said early doors, but then once he got into the game, he felt comfortable on being in that pitch. And, and I'm sure the more training he does with the first team, the more confident he'll become. Massive future for Mason Holgate. Well, while we were over in Austria this summer, we gave Mason the opportunity to be a TV presenter. We handed him the microphone, lined him up for the camera. We invited him to host a special under-23s crossbar challenge. As always, the boy took it in his stride, although on the day, we have to say, he was better with the microphone than he was with the football. Gethin Jones, defender. <laughs> What's that, Wales under-21 captain? Is that what I heard? All oh, right. <laughs> Ew, Geth. Bale. Oh. Worse than his breath, though. <laughs> His head fell off here. <laughs> He's in all kinds. Oh! <laughs> here we go. Stinker. Absolute stinker. Connor Grant, midfield. Granty, left foot, strong side. Ah, it's high. It's high. It's just a tester. It's just hot. He's getting it ready. He's getting it ready. He's up again. The stair, the few steps. Is it it? Is it? Oh. Take a bit off, Granty. Little run up. He's hit it. Oh, he's flying. Here we go. This is it. He's on fire. Oh, no. Stop it, Granty. Disgusting. Three in a row. At trick. Here we go. Oh, my God. Oh, my. Special. Special. <laughs> Mason Allgate, defender, commentator. Hold on. Bing. Starts it off, he runs up, he clips on. <laughs> my groin, my groin. <laughs> he goes again. <laughs> my balls are a bit further back than everyone else's. I just like to throw that out before I start. I've hit it. Oh. This one's for you, David. Techers. Oh! Two! Oh. <laughs> Oh no, I can't, I can't lose. This is it, this is it, all or nothing. I've had Mike in my hand as well, it's threw me off, but the winner is Conor Grant. It was never in doubt, were it? Must be a proud moment for you. Yeah, it's a big moment, obviously happy for it, and just want to thank the lads for the company today. Keep going, strong, 
Just like your beard. Thank you, mate. Wales under 21 captain, <laughs> Gethin Jones. <laughs> well, I think my job's safe for the time being, but well done, Conor Grant. And that nicely wraps up part three of this week's programme. Coming up after another break, we'll hear from Ronald Koeman and Ramiro Funes Mori. Welcome back to the fourth and final part of this week's show. We'll start the countdown now to Saturday afternoon's Premier League visit of Stoke City to Goodison Park. The Potters are a different proposition under Mark Hughes than they were under Tony Pulis, but they still have that same work ethic. And that's why Ronald Koeman believes the team spirit is so crucial for Everton. I tried uh, to promote it from my first day because it's not about 11 players. We have a big squad. We have a lot of competitions. Okay, we will get players will get some disappointments because they are not starting or even not on the bench. But uh, you win and you lose with the whole team, and, and, and that's the spirit of what you need to get the best out uh, of the team and to get the best out of yourself. Four points from the first six available. Is that a pleasing start for you? It's a good start, of course, uh, because Tottenham home and West Brom away is not not really. Uh, an easy start and of course we had some changes still we are not uh, the squad what we will have finally uh, after the transfer window uh, we had some injuries uh, some players did not do a normal good pre-season the team will be fitter the team will be better but uh, i think it's a it's a good start but we have and we need to continue so not confidence will be high amongst the Everton ranks, but it won't be easy against Stoke City, it never is. No, it ain't. Uh, Mark Hughes, I think he's a goal-capable manager as well. Uh, he'll be looking forward to coming back to Goodison Park and uh, he'll have his team well organised, but they've got a bit of flair about them as well. So, it's going to be a, it's going to be a difficult game. They beat us last season mm. and uh, it, was, it was a good game, but not the, game that, not the result that we wanted. Uh, hopefully, the game will be a good game, but hopefully we'll get the result we want. Stoke have only picked up one point from their opening two games, but to go to newly promoted Middlesbrough on day one was mm. tough. And then at home to Manchester City, they were, they were never really in it. No, Man City are a quality, quality team. And I think whoever finishes above them will win the league if there is anybody. So, uh, and you're right, Middlesbrough got promoted. The, the whole atmosphere would have been electric up at uh, Middlesbrough. So, yeah, it's been a difficult start, but hopefully this will be another difficult game for them and they'll go on with nothing away from Goodison on, uh, on Saturday. It's difficult to sit here and predict our starting eleven, isn't it? Because the competition's so good. It's fantastic, and I think they might be listening to that interview. There might be another couple of additions as well, hopefully before the transfer deadline, uh, which will make it more competitive. So, and as uh, the boss has stipulated there, you've got to work, earn the right to be in the team, and work exceptionally hard to stay in the team. So that's the sign of a good squad. Well, Lassie looks a player, doesn't he? Oh. I'm looking forward to watching it. <laughs> Welcome aboard. Well, we could fill an entire Everton show by talking about all the great players that Ronald Koeman has worked alongside during his career. You don't play for Ajax, PSV, Feyenoord, Holland and, of course, Barcelona without linking up with some genuine superstars of world football. So the manager's view that Gareth Barry is one of the best players he's ever coached is interesting, to say the least. It, it was a big comment because I, uh, I manage a lot of good players. But he's one of the players who is really intelligent on the pitch and he knows what happened in the game and he knows and, and make decisions and solutions if there's any problem on the pitch. And that type of players is what I like because that's really uh, the coach on the pitch and, and still he can improve and in his communication, but normally it's a really uh, a quiet player but he shows his his commitment to the team and, and, and he's a clever player and, and in our ball position he's an important player because he's he's one of the players who can really giving the best pass at, at the right moment and, and that's important for the strikers. This season is his twentieth season in the Premier League. Why do you think he's managed to, to play so long at the highest level? First of all, uh, because it's a really a good professional. If you uh, if you keep your body fit, uh, if you are really a good professional, you can play so long. 
And of course, uh, sometimes you need to give that kind of players on that age a little bit rest uh, in, 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 in the week, in, 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 in some exercises in training to get the best out of himself for the weekend. And, and that's normal because it's a different way, different way to coach and to manage players from 35 than you manage players from 20. That's, that's a big difference. Has, has it encouraged you as well, just how quickly he's formed a partnership with Idrissa in central midfield? Yeah, because they, they are really uh, in balance. And, and what, you, what you like to have on your midfield is, is different type of midfield players. And uh, Idrissa is that player who, on the side of, uh, of Carrot, can do his job. Uh, he's running more, he's, he's, he's covering more distance. And then and in our ball position is Garrett, the first man in, in, in try to help the defenders in, in to have good ball position. And that's really a good, good tandem, but we have more midfield players who can occupy that, that position of the two players. Lodge Gareth Barry has been outstanding from the second he walked through the door at Everton Football Club, but what he doesn't do regularly, by his own admission, is score goals. So it was nice to see him get the winner. It was fantastic to see him get the winner and celebrate it as well. Uh, but Gareth, I didn't know really what to expect when Gareth Barry signed for Everton Football Club. I didn't, I didn't really, not saying that out of disrespect, but I didn't really watch his career because he weren't playing for Everton. Mm. Uh, but the minute he came through that door, and I thought, wow, first game, what a passer, what a player, what an intelligent player. And people were saying to me only last season, his legs are starting to go and that. No way. When you've got James McCarthy or Drissa Gay outside of him to really work uh, the opposition as well and then give him the ball, he, as the boss said, he knows when to use it and where to use it. He's a pleasure to watch, isn't he? And plenty more to come as well, I'm sure. Well, Ronan Koeman has shown already that he can be bright, brave and flexible with his tactics during the games. His alteration from a back five to a back four certainly paid dividends at West Brom last weekend. And when we spoke to Ramiro Funes Mori this week about the challenge that Stoke City will bring, he told us that the Blues will be ready, regardless of what system the boss decides on. I think uh, you know, it's a big difference. You know, back three, you, you attack more because you have more players uh, uh, forward. But... Uh, other than that, I think it's uh, you know, it, well, bo both ways I, I played before, so uh, it's not it's not something new, you know. Uh, and during the game, we can alternate with the back three and the back four, so uh, you know we have to be sharp to 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 do it when when he asks us to do it. When have you played in a back three before? Was that back in Argentina with River Plate? Yeah, yeah, I played a uh, back three before, so it's not like I don't know the the. The tactical position. I think it, it's something you know. When you have alternative and you have to play back three, you play back three, and, and you have back four, you can play back four. I mean, there's, there's no no difficulty in, on on those positions. We've seen the team switch from a back two into a back three as well mid-game. Um, what's the secret behind being so adaptable to be able to change uh, during a game? I think, uh, uh, I think, like I said, we have to adapt to everything. Uh, we have to always uh, uh, be more people. If there's two attackers, then we have to be three defenders, you know, th uh, three against two. So I think uh, it's uh, it's, uh, it's good to to learn and, and to be adapting ourselves into uh, whatever position we can play. He was obviously a massive player in Europe, but did he the, the name Ronald Koeman make it out to Argentina as well? Yeah, I think uh, when you, you speak to uh, for Barcelona, it's, it's in the whole world. Uh, you know, they have big players uh, in the past and now, so uh, you, you know all the players from, from Barcelona. And a former defender, have you managed to learn from him yet? Yeah, obviously, I think uh, uh, he. I always listen to him because, you know, when I speak to him, he, he, he teaches me how to... Uh, defend to how to a uh, uh, little bit of everything. You know, he's uh, he was used to be a really good player, play for Barcelona. So uh, I have to listen and and and, and consider that uh, everything that that he knows is for his experience, and I have to take take care of that. 
When you were at Doncaster Rovers and Leeds United, Snoz, did you ever forget to take your silver earring out before <laughs> training? No, I don't think I would have. I don't think it suited me. It's a, it's a fashionable item, and I don't, as you can tell with my gear, I don't do fashion anyway. But uh, what would your dad have said? Oh, I, w I wouldn't have even dared. I, w I would not have even asked for one. Man, wear one. <laughs> Ramiro's done well, hasn't he, so far? Do you know what? He, he attacks the ball. He's aggressive. Uh, loves to score goals. Loves to defend. Uh, his 18 yard box and uh, yeah he's a winner he, he really is and he, he wants to play for Everton which is which is what we want to hear and uh, yeah it's going it's going to be tough it's going to be a tough season for everybody uh, mm. Jags Williams Funes Mori they're all competing for two or is he going to play three at times you don't know so you've got to be on top of your game all year round the gaffer mentioned Idris Gay and Gareth Barry in midfield as being the right balance. How important is the right balance between the two of you? Yeah, it's, it's, it's very, very important from a midfield player. Uh, Idris will, will say, I'm not the ball-playing midfield player. Gareth will say, I ain't got the legs anymore to keep doing that. So it's a good mix that they've got there. Perfect combination. And that's a wrap. It's been another busy programme to round off another busy week. And three points against Stoke City this weekend. And it'll be a perfect week with the promise of many more to come. There's a feel-good factor hovering over Goodison Park right now and long may that continue. Many thanks for joining myself and Snods this week. Please do join us again on The Everton Show in seven days' time.